So I've been telling you I'm interested in getting involved with International Defense of Pistol Association shoots and shooting. It's a really, really good way to become competent with a pistol and actually a really good way to test out your pistol. You know, a lot of people talk about reliability. They go to the ra they go to the range, they shoot fifty rounds through their firearm, really controlled conditions, perfect weather, and um, say this guns are totally reliable. That's complete bullshit. Um, so I was shooting a Beretta 92. Uh, if you look at uh, the 2010 IDPA Championship, I did a video on it. I'll just look at um, Beretta 92. There's only three shooters shooting it. Uh, and this is a championship. I don't know how many people were there. But needless to say, a lot. Um, well, my Beretta 92 that I was using... Um, shit the bed on me. I think I uh, shot it out clearly because uh, from what I can tell it seems that I've sheared the face off the extractor. Uh, I was having extract extraction issues with it. That's why I, I did that video about servicing the extractor. <clears throat> well, I didn't notice. It's very hard to notice if your extractor is cracked. Um, and so it's got to go to a gunsmith. <sighs> Love the bread of 92, but uh, it let me down. So uh, I feel like I'm kind of getting a divorce from the bread of 92 a little bit. I was unhappy. As a matter of fact, it, it um, uh, I was shooting in a classifier match, and that's when it happened. I could not finish the course of fire. I didn't bring a second handgun with me. I usually always do. It's funny because I was packing up my stuff. Uh, and I was like, ah, I'm not going to need another gun. Stupid. Um, so, failure to finish the qualifier. Um, I don't know, maybe I could have gone up a classification. I don't know, I shot, I was shooting like crap anyway. I'm not going to blame the gun, that's my fault. I really, you know, some days you have your head completely up your ass, and some days you just, not, you can't do anything wrong. At least that's how it is for me. i got to get that variability out of my game and put a lot more rounds through the guns. And one thing I know, the guys that do shoot a lot and are really good at it, they're putting like, you know, they're shooting 2,000 rounds a, a month. That's a lot of rounds. So i got to try to increase, increase that. Anyway, so if you look at uh, what was looked at using the equipment survey, the king is Glock right but I live in like a completely weirdo state where some politicians decided that Glocks are not safe for public consumption so unless it's made before 1998 you really very difficult to get a new Glock in the state of Massachusetts I'm not going to bore you with all the laws uh, a gun that is legal you know, in, the, in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts is the Smith & Wesson M&P m and 9, the m and Pro 9. The only difference, they really, is a lot of them being shot. Uh, 23 m and shooters using m and Pros, 27 using, uh, 27 using m and Pros, 23 using m and Ps, compared to, for instance, 45 using Glock 17s, Generation 3 or older. So they're actually, Smith & Wesson is actually very much catching up with Glock. So why am I blabbing on about Smith & Wesson so much? Well, I told you I'm getting a divorce from my Beretta 92. Uh, so I wanted to show you this. So um, I went to the gun shop today. I was looking at a used uh, Glock 17 Generation 2. You're talking at least a 12-year-old gun. Uh, and since they're hard to get in Massachusetts, they command a serious price. And I wasn't willing to spend type of money that they were asking for it on a used firearm that came with just one magazine and didn't even have the the Glock box. So this is what I went for. Uh, this is Smith & Wesson M&P. I guess this is the range kit. And it's a really, really, really nice, uh, nice thing to have. Let's put it like this. What's the range kit? Um, basically what the range kit is is your pistol. Okay. So here it is, the MP9. I'll do some close-ups of that. This has been safety checked. Magazine's empty. Okay, magazine's out. 
No firearm, point in safe direction, pull the trigger. Weapons cleared and safe. Comes with the firearm. It also comes with a really, really good. These are great. These, this is uh, a holster made by Blade Tech. Now, in the IDPA world, Blade Tech is a big deal. So, Blade Tech is making these for um, for packaging with the M&P. Boy, talk about good marketing. So, you get the holster. Um, you get a Uplula magazine loader. I don't really use these, but it's nice. Um, and you get a Blade Tech uh, magazine carrier, which is these are really good, uh, and they're great for IDPA. Uh, this is you. Re you want to have three magazines with you minimally, um, so you have two on your belt and then one in your pocket that you'll uh, make ready with on the line. Uh, Blade Tech once again, really nice. Saves you some serious hunting around online and turn you know try to try to get that equipment. So actually, if right out of the box, all you need is a good gun belt. Talked about that before, right? You can take this uh, firearm and um, and go shoot an IDPA match with it. Pretty pretty good deal. Um, the M and P, I've been a big critic of it. So I have to just eat my humble pie and shut my face and just say that I broke down and bought one. And I'm going to give it a try. Uh, what else does it come with? Smith & Wesson packages it with a trigger lock that I don't even know where I put the trigger lock. I think it's in the gun safe. Uh, it comes with um, uh, earplugs with a cord. Uh, that's pretty nice. Owner's manual, join the NRA, and a registration registration form. And somewhere in here, here it is, as a spent casing um, as well. The M&P9, really nice uh, pistol. I was I really wanted a Glock 17. I don't know if I don't like this, may I'll just hold on to it and then you know trade it for a Glock 17 at some point. Uh, I think the ergonomics of it are uh, pretty good, and I think it's it's not a you know, people, some people are really into the way the gun looks, you know, um, you know, I think this gun looks just fine, it's pretty, uh, pretty decent looking, um, pretty simple, so it's got that, um, uh, Glock-like factor, very similar to a Glock, right, this is clearly modeled after a Glock, but I'm trying to be more open-minded, um, it seems to be really nice, the build's, um, really good, and they get, they really... They're taking serious market share, and um, probably for the right reasons. They're well priced. They're well made. Um, Smith and Wesson has been responsive to uh, earlier problems with earlier models, um, and uh, it's really nice. What what are the features? Well, it's got decent sights. Let's see. They're not night sights. If you get the Pro, it comes with Novak night sights, I believe. Um, it's got an ambidextrous. Um, slide stop lever so it's on, on both sides that's good for you lefties out there um, I like the scalloped let's see if we can get this to look here on the frame um, scalloped here it's really really good grip it'll like cut cut into your grab a hold of your fingers pretty good when you're racking back that slide um, you know, very very nice. It's got a, um, a jointed trigger. It's a little bit different than the Glock, uh, but kind of the same safe action trigger principle, sort of, but not really. Um, so, pr pretty nice, pretty nice. I think they've done a good job with this. Um, the only thing I don't really like about it is that. Um, Oh, it's also got a loaded chamber indicator. You know, I think you're best served by just always assuming it's loaded, right? Treat them carefully. It's got an accessory rail, which I could really do without for my purposes, but it's not bad to have it on there. It doesn't hurt anything. Um, what I don't like about it, uh, the trigger, I think the trigger is going to wind up needing a trigger job. It's, um, it's, it's heavy. It's a little gritty, so these generally need a trigger job. If you get the Pro, it's got a bit of a smoother trigger, but it's nowhere near as smooth as a real trigger job. So you know, 
The MFP Pro is actually not allowed in Massachusetts at the moment. <laughs> Just whatever. Um, to break, how do you break it down? Well, one thing that's kind of nice, although it's not, I don't really view it as a factor, a lot of people will, is that to break it down, you do not need to pull the trigger. Okay? What you can simply do is uh, rack back your slide, like so, and then right here in the handle is this tool. So you need kind of a tool, at least if you have big fingers. You turn this thing quarter of the way, and it's really tight because it's brand new. Uh, so we're going to turn this quarter of the way. Okay, like so. And then you just pull it out. There you go. Okay, uh, and I'll show you what. And then what you have to do is inside here. Okay, I guess if you had a really skinny finger, you can do it. But the part of the extractor mechanism gets in the way. You got to reach in here and pull down a sear lever. Okay, and um, once that's pulled down, you can now come here to the slide release lever turn that down and just basically um, release the slide lock comes right apart okay there you have it you know where have we seen this before right this is very glock like uh, inside it's got um, metal rails that the slide rides on very very similar very reminiscent to the glock trigger bar at least to me which is done, that's a good thing, right? I mean, that's a tried and true design, not a bad thing. It does have a nice feature of a metal guide rod, rod and, sp and spring. It's metal, of course. And the barrel is uh, very similar to what we've seen in many, many other firearms. Tried and true design, okay? Goes back together very easily. Uh, we put in our barrel. Blue goes into the front because it's size. You can see the difference in the size of the ends of the guide rod, right? The small one goes in the front. You can't really mess this up at all. There's only one way it can go in. And uh, it's just self assembly at that point. Like if you're familiar with any modern polymer pistol, um, they're all pretty much going to be all the same. Make sure your, your guide rod's seated correctly. Uh, if it's seated like that, that's incorrect. Okay, there's a little moon-shaped um, indentation. It's got to kind of snap into. It should look like that, and it should be kind of up a little bit. Okay, it shouldn't be pushed all the way down onto the barrel. Yeah, it should fit right in that groove. <clears throat> to put it back together, just do everything <clears throat> in the opposite direction. You mate the slide to the frame. Bring it forward, push it all the way back, lock it back, um, flip up your uh, takedown lever. It has to be in this position because you see this half moon shape here. You can't you can't uh, turn this down unless it's in this position. You let your slide go forward. Okay. Now, sorry, one thing I forgot to mention is you can either push this thing down, push this thing back up. Where is it? I if you can see it in here. See that? Not this. The thing further, you could push it. You could push it back up now, or if you forget to do that, it's no big deal because you actually can do that with your finger. But when you put a magazine in it, it'll push it up. Okay, a little function test. Okay, we'll keep our finger on the trigger, cock it, let it go forward, get the reset. It's got a nice reset. It's it's, it's pretty similar to to a Glock reset. Um, really good. Um, without that little take, that little take town tool f uh, performs a different function. These back straps, this is a nice feature, are removable. Uh, this is a medium one. You can put a large one or a small one in there, and it, you can kind of custom fit the gun to your hand. Okay, the medium one feels the best to me. We'll see shooting which one feels best. And so that there is a, basically a stop here that goes into the frame, just put it in there, rotate it down, and come around the bottom, take your your takedown tool, insert it back in, you can only go in one way, push it all the way in, and then turn it, and you're you're good to go. Okay? 
There we go. MP9. Nice firearm. I'll give you a range report on it soon. Have a good one.